gasoline. Time to go. Helicopter's waiting, sir. We've had a couple of dolphins, and we are home. Okay. Who are you? Governor, I'm Angeline Linklater's lawyer, and you haven't returned any of my phone calls, but you know that. Security! You can ask the Board of Pardons and Paroles to reconsider. Nobody's saying that you should set her free, but killing her is barbaric, and it's completely unconstitutional! How can you sleep at night knowing Comes that? Comes a time in every man's journey when he gets to pass through the mystery of his life, look into the clear waters of his soul, and see who he really is. He didn't know it yet, but for Judge Gibbs, that time it comes. All the people you sentenced to death, isn't Miss Linklater the first to actually face the electric chair? About time. But she says she is not a threat to society, Judge. In fact, she says she's undergone a conversion since she's been in prison. Well, then that conversion will come in handy in the great hereafter, won't it? Are you aware that the state of Florida spends over $3 million to send a prisoner to the electric chair? And not one of those prisoners will be a repeat offender, will they? Thank you very much, Judge. You're one of those hard copy people, aren't you? <laughs> I thought so. state of Florida and pursuant to the authority and responsibility vested by the Constitution and laws of the state of Florida this warrant is hereby issued directing the superintendent of the Florida State Prison to cause the sentence of death to be executed upon Angeline Linklater in accord with the provisions of the laws of the state of Florida Angeline do you have anything to say I said it all in my book I'm still here. I didn't get this job because I'm careful. I got it because I'm good. And I don't duck when it all hits the fan. Nothing like this has ever happened before, Judge. You have to admit it. It's going to get complex. Complex is ordering coffee at a Starbucks. This is a no-brainer. Mechanical error, nothing more. Fix it, hit the switch, and poof, she's gone. Uh, popsicle anybody? Judge, we have to be careful about how we say poof, she's gone. There's a lot of support for Angeline Linklater out there. Coops. 
Yeah. When you yeah. declare for governor, you're going to find more moderates out there than you think. Moderates are just folks who haven't been mugged yet or burglarized or found their daughter in a hammock with a Cuban soccer player. They'll come around. Oh, here we go. As governor of the state of Florida, blah, 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 issue this warrant, blah, 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 to cause the sentence of death to be executed upon Angeline Linkletter on some day of the week beginning noon, Tuesday, the 28th day of July, 1998, and ending noon Friday, the 31st day of July, 1998, in accord with the provisions, et cetera, et cetera. There's our official position, boys. The state wants this over with quick, as plain as the gut in old Charlie here. Bob Isom Gibbs. Oh, yeah. That young woman is not supposed to die. What happened tonight is a sign. Well, we appreciate your concern, darling, but everything's under control here. I mean, nothing you need to lose any sleep over. Why don't you go on home back to bed? I wish I could, Big, but I can't hold my tongue any longer. This is an evil thing that you're doing. And you think that you can keep your hands clean by hiding behind the law, but you can't. Your soul, Big, it's in danger. Hector, see if somebody drives her home. I warned you, Big. As heaven is my witness, I warned you. was not a good year for electric chairs. How soon can you get it fixed? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I ain't sure I want to do it. What? Well? I'm coming. One minute. What the hell do you mean you don't want to do it? You got a moral objection to the death penalty or something? No. It's just you never paid me for the last job. Those Christmas lights I put up around the municipal plaza, you folks still owe me for two-timers, and a case of twinkle bulbs. Get serious. May not seem like a lot to you, but my family can live quite a while on that money, providing we eliminate ammunition and cable. Come on, Dickie. I don't want to be late to work on my first day. Mrs. Gibbs is waiting for me. I'm mean, negotiating here. You don't care that I am trying to better myself. Well, you know I'm behind you having a career, 110%. I gave you five gorgeous babies. I nursed them and I raised them up good, and now it is Inez's turn. Well, you've only been part of the workforce, what, an hour? When it comes to breadwinning, I'm still doing most of the winning. I threaten you, don't I? Don't get all crazy, woman. You tell Mr. Finch that you have to take your wife to work. If you can't wait five more minutes and keep your mouth shut, you can damn well walk. Excuse me, Rob. I assume you needed operational. Your Honor, since her first trial, my client has expressed remorse. She pled guilty when temporary insanity was also an option, but you know that you were there. All of this has been presented countless times during the appeals process. Now, with all due respect... And managed to become a nationally acclaimed author. 25 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list and a quote from a U.S. senator. She has created a moving personal account and offers some fresh, provocative ideas on prison reform. When you read this, I'll be dead. Twenty-four ninety-five. No wonder people don't buy books anymore. <laughs> Have you actually read it, Your Honor? I don't read books by people who ice pick their boyfriends to death. Given the circumstances which surrounded the act of her execution, in accordance with Article 8, the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, and Sections 9 and 17 of the Constitution of the State of Florida, it should be considered cruel and unusual punishment to attempt to execute that woman again. This is not an appeals court. Therefore, I wish to enter a motion to postpone the link later execution indefinitely, until such time as her appeal to the Supreme Court for a commutation of sentence can be reopened. You truly believe this argument has merit? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Well, I believe you're right. It does have merit. In Canada or Switzerland or some other country where they coddle deviant criminals, but not here in the good old USA. No, sir. Motion denied. Angeline Linklater goes back to the electric chair tonight. Hold it there, Church. Not so fast. Old Sparky's got a generator problem. Needs a new solenoid. Got to order me one all the way from Pocatello, Idaho. You won't be frying as much as an egg for a couple of days. The Miami Herald's reporting that you and the judge are feuding over what should be done with Miss Angeline Linklater. Well, I believe that he's just working through something that happened to him hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago when he was somebody else. 
You mean in a past life? That's right. Do you still think the fact that Angeline survived the electric chair is a sign from God? Excuse me. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Gibbs is a very busy woman, and she has no more time. So if you have any more questions, you can just address them to her associate, Inez Crow. Thank you. Come on. My husband's the fella fixing the chair. Can you tell us anything else? Well, he's been a real weenie to me lately. I don't know what I'll do if Big goes through with this. I hope that someday I can find it in my heart to forgive him, but I can't promise. Have you told him this? Yes, I have. But his mind is closed. He's a Sagittarius, a time traveler, which means he knows what he's doing is wrong, but he just is not yet in touch with his inner self. Leanne, I gotta have your help here. I only have two or three days at the most. I need to know if there's anything that I'm missing. I mean, is there any other possible way to appeal to your husband? Believe me, I wish I knew. Oh, that poor woman. They sent my Uncle Tull up to the death house. My great uncle, actually, on my mama's side. I remember her telling me the story. Shaving his head, strapping him in the chair. And you know what he did, Uncle Tull? He looked out at that warden, and he said, if you're going to kill me, I dare you to pull the switch yourself. Well, you can imagine how that stopped everything cold. What happened next? What do you mean? The switch. Did he actually pull it? Oh, yeah. Three times. But you sure got to respect Uncle Tall for getting the warden to do the dirty work himself. My client, Angeline Linklater, is hereby issuing a challenge to the Honorable Bob Gibbs. If he had the balls to sentence her to death, then he should have the balls to go into her cell and look her in the eye. I won't do it. I don't have to come when a murderer calls. Look, every network, every wire service, every newspaper in the country has got this. America wants to see you take up this challenge. I can't believe the backing this woman has. I just heard Peter Jennings announce the UN, the European Parliament, and Fred Rogers, all in support of Angeline Linkletter. Who the hell is Fred Rogers? You know, the skinny guy with the kids show. Won't you be my neighbor? Oh, yeah, the guy who's always changing into his tennis shoes. Yeah. Okay, I'll go see her, but I'm not staying for long. Welcome, Your Honor. I just wanted to make sure I told you in person that I bear you no malice. I believe you did the right thing. The sentence you handed down was appropriate at the time. I thought so. I'm surprised to hear that you agree. Well, I guess this is a week for surprises. I was expecting to be singing with the Archangels by now. Did it ever occur to you that you might end up somewhere more intense? Hell? Been there, done that. Keep staring at me. It is me. I am the same Angeline Linklater that sat in your courtroom for half a year. Last time we met, you were an 18-year-old freak with a purple hairdo and a nail through your nose. I never figured that you'd look so, uh... So what? Uh, healthy. Well, 10 years can do a lot. You look different, too. Better, actually. Something in your eyes. You're happier. I haven't changed my mind. Teddy Bautista's body had 27 puncture wounds that appeared to be made by an ice pick, which was later confirmed when Angeline Linklater surrendered the murder weapon upon her arrest. Sure, if you keep looking at your watch, is this an inconvenient time? I have a dance lesson in 10 minutes. Well, forgive me, but in light of what we're discussing here, that seems kind of trivial. Well, I'm not so sure we're doing's even legal. That's arguable. You're trying to depose me in a case that's closed. No, I'm trying to gather background. Come on. What? Look, you're the one that found the body in the first place, and you were the one that arrested Angeline. And maybe there's something that you can remember, some sort of fact that you left out. I was a witness in the original trial and all the appeals. If I'd have left something out, it would have shown up by now. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I can walk you to your car, though. Do you know, I've just had an entire conversation with you, and I can't figure out which side of this whole death penalty issue you're on. Is it relevant? No. I'm actually curious. Well, that's why they invented subpoenas. 
You pinch up very fast when things get sensitive. And you don't know the difference between a conversation and a cross-examination? Yeah, I do. This is totally off the record. I... Where do you stand on Angeline Linklater? Well, I think she finally found herself a good lawyer. So tell me, what's this all about, really? Now, what do you want from me? I just wanted to show you the woman that I am today. I regret where I came from, but I'm proud of who I've become. Judge, I want to thank you for coming in today. I know this must be difficult for you. We're done? Well, uh, unless you can think of anything else. I have my meditation in a few minutes, but I could move it. No, no, no don't, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> I better go. Uh, well, you have a nice, uh, a nice, uh... Trip. Yeah. Guess that's what it is, isn't it? Give up on Miss Leanne. Now you know that you're his only hope for his salvation. But what if he won't learn? Leanne, you still up? When he's strong, you just be stronger. Leanne! I just gave that hard copy crew a run for their money. Their van ended up in a ditch over by the interstate. <laughs> they all walked away. I don't know why I get such a big kick out of that. Big? You know, this whole execution fiasco has been eating into our alone time. Let me go get washed up, and we'll make up for that. Wait, what about Angeline? What did you think of her? Charismatic, no denying that. And she's become a very attractive woman. Those 10 years have been very kind to her. But... Not as kind as they've been to my own precious flower. Were you able to experience a connection with her on some higher no, level? I've experienced plenty. Were you able to see that the hmm? demon that caused no. her to do such a horrible crime has been outcast and could never return to a vessel that's been purified by suffering? That demon was just plain jealousy. Beware of a woman with a broke heart and a kitchen tool. Don't degrade that woman, Big. And give me my panties back. No. She was born less fortunate than you no, or no, me. No, 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 no. She made her own bed. She can lie in it, all right? And right now, I'm gonna lie in mine with you. You know what? I have never said this before, and it hurts me. What? To do this. But I can't be with you tonight, Big, not in the way that you want. You know, you need to forget about this whole execution thing. Why don't you just take some of those cleansing breaths that you always like to take? Get you back in the mood? Okay? I can't. You can't? I can't. Well, fine. It's your loss, my sweet wife. Good night. And the voices of lost souls would visit the judge tonight, and his sleep would be fitful, and his mind would wrestle with his heart, and the power of his demons would be tested. Oh, you nasty little thing, loosen up. Come on. Oh, yeah. That's gonna shine up real nice. What are you doing, Dicky? Making us some easy money, that's what. Well, will it still run? Don't worry, Pumpkin. I'm working for Uncle Sam now. The big time. The warden's so hard up, I got him to send a town car. For me, Dicky, for me. How am I supposed to get to work? <sighs>
late. I had a transportation crisis. What's the matter, honey? Oh. The wondrous thing about lemonade is it makes people sit. You can't drink it and pace up and down. Cools the body, cools the soul. Your load looks a bit lighter. You know, I was put on this earth to save his soul. And I welcome that as a sacred duty. And yet to see him go down this path, I don't know if I have the strength to turn him. It's plain to see you're somebody that don't give up. But this would change everything. Like a hurricane changes a beach forever. Well, there's not a heck of a lot of time left, but still, anything can happen. As my sister Mavis used to say, between the idea and the act, a whole kingdom lies. That's right. How in the world are you staying so relaxed? I just close my eyes and let the world float away. I'm just gonna kinda leave it out there to further notice. Well, the key to this whole thing is Judge Gibbs. I'm sure of that, like I'm sure of my own heartbeat. How'd he react when he saw you? Well, I don't guess he was expecting to be dealing with the new and improved Angeline Linklater. Good. I'm gonna keep working on him. It was interesting, though, being with a man like that. Talking, looking at him. Watching him look at you. It's weird, I know, but... All of a sudden, I think my sex drive is back. Ah, Miss Baker. Good afternoon. Dickie. You're looking at the top of the line there. They'll bury you and your grandchildren before this gives out. I'm out of pocket 800 bucks for this. I'll start the process. Warden, as I've said, I have some issues with the way the state does business, and payment in cash would go a long ways towards getting rid of those issues and freeing up my mind so that I can fix your chair. You'll have your money. Just get it fixed. Miller time. Well, look at this. Nice architecture. They don't have anything like this where they keep me. I read your book. Please, sit down. I just have a few questions about what you wrote. Now, in the beginning of the chapter, I start off an attractive man with mischievous eyes, a keen mind. Your words, not mine. I remember that part. And then... You spend the next 15 pages trashing me, calling me pig-headed, self-serving, dogmatic, petty. Doesn't mean you're not a fine person. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts a chapter about you is the only one you read. I'm a busy man. I skim the rest. Did you happen to catch a chapter where I talk about abolishing the death penalty? Taking all the resources we waste on putting people to death and turning it back into the root causes of crime. Before you waste any more time and energy, let me tell you, I know what's going on here. Well, okay, then tell me. This tactic, putting a new face and a new conscience on the condemned, playing on the fact that you're the first one of my cases to come this close to the chair and figuring that maybe, when it all comes down to it, I'm not as tough as they say I am. I never doubted the tough part. Good. But I, I do believe that underneath all this eye for an eye stuff, there is a man who is reasonable and humane. See, my wife would definitely appreciate that observation. I, however, know the difference between a compliment and a clever move. And you're entitled to your opinion. Just remember, though, our first meeting was my idea. This one was yours. Okay, hit it. She's good to 
go. Another outburst like that, I'm gonna have the bailiff hose you Philistines down. Continue, Miss Baker. Your Honor, I wish at this time to submit on behalf of Angeline Linklater a petition for habeas corpus pursuant to Article 5, Sub B of the Florida State Constitution. Now, let me get this straight. You are contesting the original verdict? No, Your Honor, I'm contesting the sentence. Yeah. The sentence? My sentence? Court is in recess for one hour. Miss Baker, in my chambers. What the hell kind of Hail Mary play are you running out there? It's a legitimate argument. No governor, no state board in their right mind is going to entertain that sorry ass petition for two seconds. You'll get hammered like a flounder in a Creole restaurant. All right, cut the crap, Judge. You don't want Angeline Linklater to die any more than I do. What makes you say that? Because I wouldn't even be here if you did. You never would have allowed that bogus hearing. You just wanted to see if I had anything that could possibly give you a legal out. And you know what? I don't. And I'm assuming that because we're in here alone, that you do. You think the Chief Circuit Judge of Okeechobee County is going to interfere in an execution ordered and a judge by the state of Florida? Yes, I do. So if you've got anything, Judge, then please give it to me. Do you know about pollination, Miss Baker? Yeah, I took biology. Well, these gorgeous plants have developed incredible intelligence over eons of time. They've devised intricate strategies to procreate their species. For example, did you know that most orchids are bisexual? No, I must have missed that one. Oh, and they can also imitate insects. Now, the fantastic Philanopsis biolatia imitates the large golden orb spider. See, she, let, let, let's call the orchid a she in this case. She tricks the male predator wasp that by nature kills and eats these spiders into stinging her. The wasp repeatedly thrusts its stinger into her sexual organs, thereby pollinating the plant. Pseudo antagonism, we call it. All right, this, this is all very fascinating and I'm sure in certain circles it's even arousing, but is this actually leading to anything? Entrapment. Deception. The orchid pretends to be something it's not in order to function in matters of life and death. When am I going to get this in English, Judge? See, these lovely flowers understand the intricacies of nature, just as Maximum Bob understands the intricacies of the law. Now, since old Sparky came onto the scene 55 years ago. 237 men and one woman have been electrocuted in this state. And this man, Elmore Van Kugel, should have been number 238. I sentenced this piece of dog crap to death eight years ago, and I still maintain that despite the board's decision, he tricked the state into letting him live. Uh, Miss Baker, we never had this conversation. What conversation? I just want to come by and provide whatever source of comfort I could. Well, you have. Is there anything else I can do? I don't think so. Read your aura, enhance your heart chakra. There, there is something. When I was 16, I had a baby that I gave up for adoption. Do you want to see her? No. No. Uh, she'd only be 12 now. I wouldn't want to put her through this, through the trauma of knowing who I was or what was going to happen to me. I understand. But you wouldn't mind knowing how she's doing and if she's happy. I'd just like to know if for once I brought something good into this world. I'll see what I can find out.
Boy, now that got kind of heavy there for a minute, didn't it? <sighs> Why don't we talk about something fun for a change? Right. Like your husband. <laughs> Big. Now there is one complex man. Tell me about it. Annette! Your blurs are done! I know you spent a lot of money, but people around here are just gonna slide them under their parakeets. Come on, Inez. We got us a job to do. Oh. And the thing that makes this so absolutely perfect is that the Supreme Court actually becomes our partner and not our enemy. I love it because they're the very ones that ruled it unconstitutional to execute the insane. But I'm not insane. Don't be so sure. There's already a precedent for this. There's a guy. He's on death row. He tried to commit suicide, and the court declared him unfit to be killed. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> what will you liars think of next? So, you're recommending that I try to kill myself? No. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm recommending that you fake trying to kill yourself. There is no shame in that. Mm. So, what then? Well, so then I file a motion, and you get a stay of execution, and then you're transferred to a facility for the criminally insane. But there, they're going to evaluate your mental capacity, and that could take years, Angeline. Can't do it. Why? Why are you crazy? Apparently not enough. Angeline, this could save your life. This is why you hired me. Look, I'm tired of waiting for the inevitable. God forgive me, I got nothing to live for. Angeline, please, if you just know no, if I'm gonna die today, then they're gonna have to kill me. I'm not gonna do it for them. There's nothing to be scared about. If we take a situation that frightens us or makes us uneasy and re-examine it on a metaphysical level, we sometimes find that it's merely a test from an alternate dimension and a golden opportunity to conquer our fears and be of service to others. I don't know what you're talking about, and my daughter isn't home anyway. My little girl's going to be home from school in a few minutes. She doesn't know anything about her connection to this Linklater woman, please. We don't mean no harm. All we need is a picture of her, whatever you can spare. Think about the shoe being on the other foot. And it was you gave your daughter away. And come your last day on earth, all you want is a chance to see what she growed into. Because in a few hours, the state's going to crisp you up like a piece of bacon. Just one itty-bitty little snapshot? Boy, when I said itty-bitty, she took me at my word. Uh, well, at least we got what we came for. I just hope we can make it back in time. <laughs> Driver's license, please. Yes, sir. I clocked you at 95 miles per hour. No reason to be at those speeds unless you're chasing someone or being chased. Oh, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> this license is expired. Oh. Well, you know, I was just thinking about that the other day. How long? Two years. I'll have to ask you ladies to step outside, please. I need to search that vehicle. Officer, excuse me. Ma'am, exit the car right now, please. You're not going to believe this. Miss Baker. We still got a problem. Oh, I don't see what the problem is. We're not bank robbers. We're just reckless drivers. Oh, come on. Well, there is one little problem. What? I bought a gun just in case. 
Where is it? In my purse. Do you have a photograph on you? Yep. Follow me. Don't ask questions and pray. Client's gonna ignore counsel, then it's over. You can't make her do it. Then that's it? She dies? No. Maybe it's time we let her go. No. What if you talk to her? I'm already way over the line on this one. I gotta watch out for numero uno. Who's gonna watch out for Angeline Linklater, Judge? Well, what do you suggest? I take the warden hostage, chain myself to the chair? Might slow him down a bit, but they're still gonna give her the juice. This is not over yet. I'm afraid it is. Hello? Hello? What? Who am I talking to? I can barely hear you. Hello? Sheriff? It's Leanne Gibbs. Leanne, yeah. Hi, Gary. Well, I guess you can tell this isn't a social call. What's wrong? Well, something extraordinary has happened, and maybe someday we'll all laugh about it, but right now, the situation is fairly tense. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. Yes, I understand. And who's following you? Everybody. Angeline Linklater will walk into the death house and be strapped into the electric chair for the second time. One can only imagine what is going through her mind at this moment. The crowd here is still ferociously divided on the question of her sentence. You, sir, any comment on what's going on here today? All I can say is if they're going to sell nachos, they should have set up some chemical toilets. Excuse me. Back to you. She's in the sixth grade. My second last meal. Guess I'll hold the record now.
attempted suicide during her last meal. Is that true? Did she use a steak knife? I can't comment on any of that. Do you now believe that your client is completely insane? She will be transferred to a state psychiatric facility where her mental fitness will be evaluated. That's all I can say. Ms. Baker, okay. do, well, you no, 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 no. do we know where they are? I hope Angelina will be all right. I don't know. Emily insane. Oh, it's not so bad. They got a great pool, and you can't beat the arts and crafts anywhere. Inez? Dickie, I'm in no mood. Be nice. I couldn't find you anywhere, Peach Fuzz. I thought you might have left me for good because I've been such a... Dumbass? Okay, yes. I got you a surprise. Go on. I did. There it is. Now you won't have to be late for work no more. You always said you wanted a convertible. Come here, you sexy little swamp rat. <laughs> <laughs> True, according to the Constitution, we do not execute the insane, which, if you want my opinion, is more loophole than law. Once again, the highly flawed legal system of our country has stuck its clumsy foot in the pathway of justice, so we've only lost the battle. The war is still up for grabs. What you did was wonderful, Big. Oh, I had no choice. The law is the law. My hands were tied. Well, now, there's no shame in doing a good deed. Your aura is appropriately silver blue tonight. Hmm. I don't know why. I ain't doing nothing different. So, see, I think you looked into your heart and you did the right thing. Well, now, if I did do the right thing, is there a reward? <laughs> <laughs> Big, all good boys go to heaven, you know that. Ooh. On the plantation where I grew up, there was working horses and riding horses, and there was few horses. Now, they wouldn't learn nothing. Buck you off, jump the fence, kick the barn door down. Now, I reckon the judge was one of them horses. Have to stay on them every day. If they don't break well after a few years, well, you can always sell them to the army. <laughs>